All right. This is number one. This is number one right up front. So I want you guys to, uh, when we talk about independent tasks, we also say ready task, right? Yeah. So ready task is a little better description here. So I want you to look at this diagram. How many ready tasks are there? Three. You guys see there's three? A ready task is something I can put on the schedule right now. It's ready to, to process. <coughs> and in this question, in this diagram, I've got three ready tasks. So then how many of these tasks then are dependent? Four. There are, there are four left. So there's seven total. And so your ready task and your independent, your dependent task should have to add up to seven. Questions on that? You're not going to have to know this for Tuesday, but will you? I'm sorry. You're not going to have to know this for Friday, but you will have to know this for Tuesday's task. The difference between a ready task and a dependent task. A ready task is something we can put right on the schedule. I am not, you will not see the word independent on the test. Why not? It's, uh, there's some disagreement in different areas in the field of, of discrete math, what a ready task is and what an independent task is. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that I'm not going to use the word independent on, uh, on the test. An independent task is one that, in my view, is one that sits all by itself. It has no arrows, no connectivity. It is also happens to be a ready task, but there's just too much confusion um, differentiating between the two. And I don't think independent task we really have to worry about. And so I'm... I've waffled, you waffled over this issue the last couple of years I've taught this, and I'm, I'm taking a stand right now, okay? I'm not going to use independent task anymore. So you should be able to tell me how many pathways there are through this diagram. Well, I started, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either list them, because you've got to list them to find critical path, right? Or you can, or you can take a a colored pencil or highlighter, and you can draw through your diagraph and count them that way. Okay, so I started kind of drawing through here. So I started, the purple is T1, T4, T5. And I might as well, I might as well add them up, because I gotta figure out a critical path. So five plus five plus three is 13. And then I, the next one I have here is task one, task four, task six. Test one, test four, test six, so that's five plus five plus two, which is 12. And then my next path that I need to count here is test two, test seven, I'm not, not test seven, test four, and test five, okay? That's the next one I'm gonna do, test two, test four, test five, and I add up those completion times, that's nine plus five plus three, that's 14, that's 17. And then I have another one starting at test two. Test two, test four, test six, which is nine plus five plus two. And that's 16. That's 16. So then I've got one more here. I've got one that goes from task two to test seven. Task two to test seven. That's another path, and, that, and that's 9 plus 5, which is just 14. And then you guys, you got to remember this ready task, this truly independent task is, is its own path onto itself, and that's just task 3. That's just task 3. So how many paths do I have here? Six. So I have, I have 6. I've listed them all. And now I can count them, and I know there are six pathways through this diagram. All right, so now I'm going to schedule this. And this is my priority list right here. I'm going to schedule task one, task two, task three, task four, then task seven, then task five, then task six. So I'm going to put this project on this schedule here. And I've got two processors. So I'm going to put task one on here first. And it's completion time 
is 5. So that takes me out to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to put the scale in here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm going to put scale, the scale on this. So this completion time for tax 1 is 5. So that takes me out to 5 on the schedule. Take it off your list. Now I'm going to go and move to task 2. Task 2 is a ready task right here. Its completion time is 9. I can put it on schedule, on machine 2 on the schedule. That completion time is 9, so that takes me out to 9 right here. Take it off your list. Now the next one I'm going to put on is task 3. Task 3 is my lonesome task down here. It's not dependent. It's a ready task. I can put it on the first available, and my first available is, is machine one. Right after machine one is done processing task one, I can put it right in hour five there. So task three is going to go right there. Its completion time is three, so I need two more boxes. Take it off your list. Now I look at task four. Task four is right here. This task four is being fed by task one and task two. Both task one and task two have to be completed before I can schedule task four. So it goes after task two? So could I put it in after task two or task three? No, because task one is in here. Well, I want to try to schedule it on, on machine one, right? So what's going on after task three on machine one? Yeah, yeah we got idle time here. But then, after that, I can schedule <coughs> test, test four. And task four's completion time is five, so I need four more boxes. Takes me out to 14. Take it off your list. Now I look at task seven. Task seven's down here. It's dependent only on task two. Task two has to be done processing before we can schedule task seven. So you can just put it on behind task two? Yeah, I can bump it right up to task two on machine two. So that's what I'm gonna do. Put task seven on machine two. Its completion time is five, so I need four more boxes. Take it off your list. Now, my next one is task five. Task five is being dependent on task four. Task four is done on machine one right here at 14, so I'm gonna just bump it up right next to it. So I put task five. Five right there. It's completion time is three. I need two more boxes. I need two more boxes. Take it off your list. Now the last one is task six. Task six is also being fed by task four. It's also dependent on task four. Task four is done on machine one right there. So we can just slide it in my next available here on machine two. So that's what I'm going to do. So task six is going to go on machine two right there. Its completion time is two. I got one more box. And then right here, I've got, I've got idle time. So what's my completion time from the schedule? 17. Yes, sir, it's 17. So I write that down. So how do I know whether this is an optimal schedule? I got to compare my completion time to critical path. Well, which one of these is my critical path? Yeah, the biggest one there, that's 17. So if my critical path is 17 and my completion time is 17, is this optimal? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Why is this optimal? Yeah, it, 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 your critical path matches the completion time. They're both the same number. They're both 17. So completion time, CT, is equal to critical path. That's how you know, that's the backup. When these two numbers match, congratulations, you have scheduled your project in the most efficient, most optimal way. Was there any idle time in your schedule? Yes, yes there was. Why was there idle time? So we had two Units of idle time, but yet we managed to, to, to schedule our project in an optimal way. Now, why was there idle time? Well, there, there wasn't anything ready to process. 
in the project, 